Hello Biofreaks, welcome back to my channel Biofreaks. So today I'll be starting with new lecture series of plant physiology for CSIR net examination. So let's get started with the basics of plant physiology that is photosynthesis, right? Now in photosynthesis, we have seen this uh, reaction so many times, but uh, do we really know the basics of this? This reaction is a redox reaction. Okay, now uh, uh, as they say, you know, the plants, they utilize carbon dioxide and water uh, and in the presence of sunlight and there is something else that is chlorophyll, right? Chlorophyll is a green pigment specifically seen in the green plants, okay? So, uh, these two things are used again to produce glucose that is energy molecule and later that will be stored in starch or some sort of you know complex molecule by the plant okay or even uh, it may be just glucose that is used by the plant and what is involved is oxygen okay so that is the basic reaction that everyone knows we are learning this since sixth or seventh standard isn't it now this reaction is a redox reaction and we tend to forget our basics of chemistry in 11th and you know 12th standard we learn that and we tend to forget that so for that matter here carbon dioxide is getting reduced to glucose okay that means it is gaining hydrogen and at the same time what i can say is that it is gaining electrons and uh, you know in chemistry they also you know daughters like that get that can be loss of oxygen that can result in reduction that is fine but here the main thing that i want you to understand is that there is gain of electrons while your water molecules which are here those are getting oxidized to the molecules of oxygen so there is oxidation occurring here and what do i mean by oxidation is basically the loss of electrons Okay, this gain of electrons is reduction and oxidation is loss of electrons. These are the basics that will help you to understand Z scheme, okay, in the light reaction. So, where does this photosynthesis occur exactly? It's in the leaves, okay, everyone knows. But where exactly in the leaves? In the mesophyll cells. Okay, so in mesophyll cells, there is one type of plastid that is chloroplast, okay. So plastid is a broader term. There are many different types of plastids, one amongst which is chloroplast. Okay, there are amyloplasts and all, you know, uh, do not use the term, okay, because not all plastids are always chloroplasts, okay. And chloroplasts are the green ones because they have green pigment called as chlorophyll. Now I said there is chloroplast present in mesophyll cells. Let's learn the basic structure of chloroplast. Chloroplast has two membranes. It's a dual membrane structure just like your nucleus or mitochondria. Okay. And they have something called as grana. Now these are the granas that are staked to one top of the other like coins. Okay. Like coins. Now this grana have something called as thylakoid membrane. Now you, rem you must be remembering that I told uh, there is chlorophyll molecule in the chloroplast. So where exactly that chlorophyll pigment is there? It is present in this thylakoid membrane. Okay. Now since it is present in the lipid bilayer or the membrane of the thylakoid, okay, thylakoid membrane, I can say that chlorophyll is hydrophobic in nature. Okay. That is how it can stay in the membrane. So now, in the grana, what basically happens is light reaction. So overall, your process of photosynthesis is divided into the light reaction and there is dark reaction also termed as Calvin cycle. We'll be learning all this in detail in further lecture videos. Okay. So now in light reaction, what exactly happens is that we are forming some molecules that are important to carry out your dark reaction later. Now in this light reaction, you require light energy. And that is how we term this whole process as light reaction. So to give you 
brief on this what is happening is that there is chlorophyll molecule okay that gets excited basically there are something called as photosystems that get excited and you know series of photosystems that are there and later they produce NADPH which is energy molecule that will be later used in the dark reaction and here as the Z scheme this is something called a Z scheme which we will be learning in detail okay but for timing let me tell you that in the z scheme what happens is protons are pumped here i guess protons are pumped here the proton gradient is built up and you know uh, after some point there will be fo f1 pump through this fo f1 pump protons will be pumped out and that's how your atp will also be formed okay in this is all part of your light reaction and later this NADPH and ATP will be used in dark reaction to produce your glucose molecule okay this is your glucose molecule that will be the end desired product of your dark reaction so I hope this is clear here moving further there are you know several different types of pigments okay it's not just chlorophylls okay there are different types of chlorophylls in that there is chlorophyll a chlorophyll b c d f is also there uh, in uh, protista and certain cyanobacteria but in plants majorly we talk about chlorophyll a and b okay now basic structure of chlorophyll is very important okay if you're giving csi or net because questions do come from this part so chlorophyll uh, molecule if you look at that it is hydrophobic as i said and it has something called as porphyrin ring now this porphyrin ring has magnesium in its center this is very much similar to the hemoglobin molecule hemoglobin has iron in its center similarly this particular ring has magnesium in its center and this is all phytol tail now this phytol tail that I have here on this chlorophyll molecule is hydrophobic in nature. Now it is made up of something called as isoprenoids. Uh, I don't know if you have heard of this term isoprenoids but isoprenoids are uh, made up of 5 carbon subunits and there are 4 such isoprenoids which are there in this whole chain. So I can also say the tail is made up of tetra isoprenoids okay there are four units okay this is one unit isoprenoid made up of five carbon this we will look uh, into the second metabolites which will be the later you know portion of this whole plant physiology and very important one as well so just remember for time being chlorophyll ha do have something called as um, isoprenoid now this phytol tail which is hydrophobic in nature and porphyrin porphyrin ring it is attached okay the bond between them is ester bond okay there is ester bond co o okay so that is how the structure looks now how do we differentiate between chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b chlorophyll a has methyl group on its porphyrin ring while chlorophyll b has aldehyde group and uh, this is very important difference okay besides that if i say chlorophyll a chlorophyll a is the um, you know part of the reaction center okay there is something called as reaction center here and there will be many accessory pigments now this accessory pigments will take in the energy and finally they will be passing that energy to chlorophyll a so chlorophyll b as well for that matter is an accessory pigment even you can see carotenoid here carotenoid is again another accessory pigment now carotenoid talking about beta carotene okay here that is uh, shown this is also termed as scavenger or it will protect the plant against harmful radiation okay and it is another you know accessory pigment then um, talking about this uh, continuing with this uh, chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b differences okay chlorophyll a is blue green in color while chlor chlorophyll b is yellow green in color uh, by the way i forgot to mention this point that why 
the color of chlorophyll is green by itself because chlorophyll on its own it will absorb blue and red light it absorbs blue and red light and it will reflect green light okay so now when you see chlorophyll a chlorophyll a is blue green in color hence i can say that it absorbs more red light than blue light while your chlorophyll b which is there it is red or you know i can say it is yellow green in color okay that means it absorbs more blue light than red light so whatever is getting reflected is not the one that is getting absorbed okay whenever a plant absorbs these lights like blue and red it will reflect back some another light of some another wavelength right and that's how we perceive a particular color so that's the basic thing here and uh, moving further these are not the uh, only pigments that are that are seen but in bacterias now specifically when you talk about bacterias bacterias have chloro bacterial chlorophyll a b c d e and they uh, absorb the light from 300 to 700 nanometer now if you go to see the visible spectra that we have is from 400 to 750 nanometer only okay so here i'll show you the visible spectra okay uh this is your uh, em waves right these are your em waves and uh, the range so this is again very important not only with regards to this topic but otherwise also many questions do occur from this okay this is the basic thing so if you sorry for that so if you focus on this there is gamma ray gamma rays are the ones that have very high frequency low wavelength and very high energy that's why they can penetrate through the cells little lesser uh, energy is of x ray yet you can say that they have very high frequency and high energy as compared to gamma they have little lower energy and uh, again the wavelength is very less okay then comes your ultraviolet ultraviolet violet you can see that violet and hence we start with 400 nanometer of visible spectra that is violet okay wave gear right so there is wave a uh, violet indigo blue green yellow orange and your red so we end up in the red color red and later we start with infrared okay so light is being absorbed from this ultraviolet region or not ultraviolet actually the visible spectra from 400 nanometer and then later the red light is also absorbed and what is emitted or what is reflected by the chlorophyll molecule is green light okay then you enter your infrared and then you uh, go for the microwaves which have higher wavelength and lower frequency lower energy again the radio waves are the ones which have very high wavelength and very low frequency or low energy so you can remember this you know this is the basic thing and everyone must know this so we were talking about the bacterial chlorophylls right so they can absorb the uh, wavelength of um, you know even as low as uh, 300 nanometer and from that range till 700 nanometer so again the groups here are changing okay uh, similar to this a and b the differentiating factor is the side groups okay uh, besides that we have billy billin pigments now when i say billin pigments billin pigments are similar uh, to your bilirubin now have you heard of bilirubin bilirubin there is a metabolism cycle overall okay so uh, bilirubin when it builds up in your body when it fails to break down okay and uh, you know basically this metabolism occurs in your liver and when it accumulates a uh, person gets jaundice okay this is also common in you know babies so um, this baby suffer from um, jaundice but now this whole pigment is similar in structure to this bilirubin okay uh, this is just extra information but then bilin structure is similar bilin pigment is similar to bilirubin now there are different types of uh, bilin pigments like phycoerythrobilin there is uh, phycocyanobilins okay then there is allo uh, phycocyanobilins 
so there are many different types of uh, billion pigments as well so all these are accessory the major one okay the one that sits in the uh, reaction center okay and gets excited later is uh, chlorophyll a so uh, that was it guys uh, for lecture one let's continue uh, the later part z scheme and certain other experiments that were uh, you know performed to prove that there are two photo systems and all i'll uh, continue it in the le next lecture so stay connected and bye bye